I'm back here, uh, this time here uh, early September. So I stay here for six months to uh, work with you and, and then teach you yeah, something. Yeah. So the, today's topic is uh, short. Uh, for short, it's a uh, common neurological uh, disease. Uh, uh, our, uh, my teacher said uh, learn neurology stroke by stroke because stroke uh, can cause the uh, neurological uh, deficit uh, that's corresponding to the neural anatomy and neurophysiology. So learning from stroke is a good way to learn neurology uh, symptoms and the signs. Uh, today uh, I would like to, uh, oh this is a, a 2019, uh, I was here in uh, SYT to join the, uh, very lucky to join the Bukipa at that time. So, uh, and last time I uh, teach a neurological examination and, uh, and the headache and the sound neurological so illness. So it's uh, uh, very nice for me to, to come back here. Yeah. So this is today's outline. I will introduce, introduce the structure for the uh, epidemiology and uh, uh, go through the etiology and pathogenesis and the diagnosis and uh, then finally the, the management. The management uh, includes uh, the acute care and the uh, uh, preventive uh, care because shock is uh, uh, an event. So uh, is is re required uh, uh, preventive prevention to uh, avoid when you uh, got stroke uh, the uh, the neuron may have some damage so there is a neurologic deficit left. Okay, so uh, there is a global burden uh, uh, compared uh, from uh, nineteen ninety to twenty thirteen. You can see that uh, uh, between the uh, two decades, the the, uh, the uh, either the uh, ischemic stroke or hemorrhagic stroke, the death and the incidence and the prevalence and the disability adjusted life years all increase about uh, one point five four uh, during the period of time. This is a map uh, uh, plot according to the age standardized uh, stroke incidence by country. Uh, this is published in uh, 2019. The data is collected on, until 2016. Uh, so uh, Taiwan is here. Taiwan is here. Uh, the ever, uh, incidence of uh, stroke in Taiwan is around uh, 150 or something. Uh, I think oh, here is the uh, Eswatini here. Uh, here. Uh, it's around the, about the same uh, incidence. Uh, and the lifetime risk of stroke, you can see that uh, uh, there's a high in China and the Russian and in the United States and North America and some. Uh, uh, countries in uh, uh, Eastern East Europe or mid uh, South Europe uh, compared with the those country uh, uh, I think Eswatini the uh, lifetime risk of stroke is relatively lower compared with other countries about uh, five to ten percent. So this is the uh, 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 data from the uh, uh, WHO, you can see that uh, from the 2000, 2000 meridian year, year and to 2019, the prevalence, uh, uh, the, the leading cause of death is uh, uh, about the same, around the, about the, the fourth uh, leading cause of death in SYT. Uh, but you can see that the life expectancy is uh, became uh, 
uh, order. So that's a good point. Uh, Compare with this red letter is uh, 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 in Taiwan the life expectancy is uh, uh, higher is uh, is older than than the Eswatini so we still have uh, something to be uh, to do to to uh, increase our life expectancy and the uh, the life quality of our of our people and in Eswatini people. So how about the gender difference between uh, uh, the male and the female? Uh, you can see the uh, uh, leading cause of death uh, in male and female is different. Uh, for male, the, uh, the leading cause of death, uh, uh, the stroke is taken uh, fifth, the fifth position. But for female, it's uh, the second position. I think it is uh, an uh, important and interesting uh, finding. Maybe there's uh, some uh, factors may increase the, the, the risk of uh, uh, stroke death in, in female in the Swati. Maybe we can find out something in the future to uh, uh, reduce the death rate. Uh, how about in Taiwan? The, in Taiwan, uh, the stroke used to be the first leading cause of death in uh, 1990, uh, 1980, 1980s. Uh, but its uh, prevalence, uh, the death uh, became uh, lower and became the third leading cause of death in Taiwan now. Uh, the, uh, but the cancer is good. Uh, getting higher and higher. And uh, the male to female uh, ratio of stroke is about two, two, to one, two to one. This is an uh, 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 incidence uh, and the uh, uh, death change uh, between the uh, 2016. Uh, in for uh, most uh, high uh, social economic country, the uh, death and the incidence and the disability adjusted life year all reduced significantly uh, from uh, about uh, uh, 50 to, to 50, about 50 percent reduced. Uh, for, for Taiwan, in Taiwan, there's a, a same trend to reduce the uh, uh, death and the uh, uh, incidence and the uh, uh, DAL-wise uh, uh, compared with uh, the 2009. Uh, how about the Kingdom mm -hmm. of Eswatini here? Uh, we also see the there's a uh, uh, reduced uh, death rate and uh, 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 disability adjusted life year, uh, but there's a slightly uh, increased uh, incidence of stroke. <coughs> The stroke uh, we can uh, simply separate as uh, two types. One type is uh, ischemic stroke. Uh, ischemic stroke is uh, uh, due to the blood clot of the blood flow, so the distal part cannot get the uh, blood and uh, cause the uh, uh, tissue ischemia and the hypoxia. And finally, you can see uh, there's a uh, low density on the CT scan. For the hemorrhage stroke, it's caused by the uh, bleeding. So there's maybe some uh, uh, aneurysm, uh, small aneurysm rupture or the weak uh, point of the vessel. Uh, when the blood pressure fluctuated, there's a uh, uh, blood coming out. So there's so on CT scan we can see a high high density on the CT scan. That's different. How about the uh, uh, prevalence and frequency of different stroke? Uh, ischemic stroke takes about uh, 70 to 85 percent. Uh, it can be caused by global hypotension, embolism, or thrombosis. How about the uh, hemorrhage? Hemorrhage uh, takes about uh, 10 to 30 percent, uh, and uh, there's a, a small uh, 
amount uh, is caused by uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, usually caused by uh, annular rupture or AV uh, malformation in the large arteries. Uh, in Taiwan, uh, there's hemorrhage stroke that account for about 16%. Uh, others uh, about 80, more than 80% are the ischemic stroke. Uh, the ischemic stroke, uh, the most common uh, reason uh, is a small vessel disease uh, followed by uh, large vessel disease. And there's about 11% are cardiogenic and the others. Uh, Talking about uh, the astros, uh, uh, the embolism, uh, we should should uh, uh, know the evolution of atherosclerosis. Actually, uh, when you uh, after, after the adolescence, the atherosclerosis start. So, uh, like me, I I am in the progress 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 of uh, atherosclerosis. Yeah, so uh, the vessel is not as new as the young man. Uh, it's an a, a endothelial injury and cause the uh, fatty streak, uh, the some LDL and the cholesterol uh, accumulation in, in between the, the endothelial and the muscular layer. And uh, finally, there's uh, the plaque grows uh, bigger and bigger. And uh, sometimes the the plaque is uh, big enough to obstruct uh, the vessel wall, and uh, sometimes the plaque may uh, rupture or uh, dislodge to uh, become an uh, emboli to uh, obstruct the distal vessel to cause embolic stroke. So atherosclerosis uh, is an important. Uh, reason uh, important pathogenesis of ischemic stroke. And uh, when cerebral ischemia, there's uh, two uh, factors may contribute to the pathophysiology. One is uh, vascular factor, and the other is metabolic factor. For the vascular factor, if we, your uh, uvular blood flow uh, change uh, below uh, 10 millimeter uh, per 100 gram per every minute, uh, they, co they cause the irreversible cell death. Uh, so for if you you keep it in the 10 to 30, uh, that may be something maybe uh, you can do to to rescue this area if you can uh, uh, let uh, the vessel uh, the uh, the uh, 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 lysis the, the blood clot to, to restore the, the blood flow. And there's a metabolic factor. Uh, when you, uh, when tissue ischemia, there's a several change about uh, ATP depletion and the lactate accumulation and the injury of uh, endothelial and oligodendroglial cell. And uh, also, they may induce the uh, inflammatory or delay the neuronal death. How about the, the intracerebral hemorrhage? The intracerebral hemorrhage usually, uh, uh, because, usually uh, because there's a uh, hypertension. Hypertension can cause the small artery, especially a penetrating artery, to supply the basal ganglia or brain stem, uh, when there's a steep uh, branch uh, coming from the, the uh, middle cerebral artery, uh, there's a, when there's a branch here, uh, sometimes uh, it's easily to, because the uh, blood flow changes, shearing force, they can uh, form uh, some small aneurysm called the uh, berry aneurysm. Uh, like uh, strawberry, uh, small strawberry. So uh, when the blood pressure fluctuates, this uh, annulant will rupture and cause the, the hemorrhage. Uh, so most common uh, cerebral hemorrhage is occurred 
occurred in the uh, basal ganglia, uh, about 35% uh, uh, in the basal ganglia area and uh, about 20% uh, uh, in the thalamus. So how about the diagnosis? The di diagnosis, if we uh, take a look about uh, the neurological deficit uh, the, during the time, uh, we can separate as a, a transient ischemia attack. Uh, this uh, neurological deficit from uh, occur and uh, complete recovery within 24 hours. And uh, there's a ring, uh, reversible ischemic neurological deficit, uh, the top recovery uh, about one day to three weeks. And the complete stroke, uh, uh, there's a permanent uh, neurological deficit. So for uh, we diagnosis a neurological units, we can uh, consider two parts. One is the uh, temporal pattern, the other is spatial pattern. Uh, for the uh, temporal pattern of the uh, disease uh, uh, occurrence, uh, you can see uh, for stroke and uh, TIA, the disease uh, occurred uh, within several seconds to several minutes to, to uh, reach the, the neurological deficit. Uh, for other species like uh, the tumor or multiple sclerosis, the symptom may develop uh, over uh, several days or weeks to reach the maximum the deficit. So uh, if we uh, take a look at uh, uh, the time cost, uh, we also can differentiate uh, the, <coughs> the, the etiological stroke uh, before you get a, a CT scan. Uh, for embolism, uh, there's uh, usually a, a large vessel uh, occluded by a, a blood clot, and uh, we have the uh, uh, thrombolytic system in your body. Uh, so sometimes in embolic stroke, we can see the patient have the uh, severe neurological deficit uh, uh, within several minutes to hours, then the neurological symptom goes away. So if you have this kind of uh, uh, clinical cause, you may uh, guess it is has caused by embolic stroke. Uh, but for hemorrhage, hemorrhage is like uh, the hematoma, like the tumor, uh, blood tumor inside. So there's the disease usually occurred uh, at emotion, emotion, and uh, the neurological deficit uh, comes to the maximal, reach the maximal uh, very fast and uh, persist. And uh, for the thrombosis, it's usually because the, the vessel is very narrowing, the blood flow getting uh, uh, lower and lower. So the clinical course may take uh, several hours to reach the maximum and persist. So this is a, a CT of head you, 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 you should you need to, to know uh, the important structure uh, like brain stand and the uh, brain, uh, thalamus, basophagia, uh, uh, putamen, and cloud and nucleus, and uh, some area of different vessel supply. Yeah, this is a, a different type of uh, ischemic stroke. And we have uh, 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 mentioned before. And the uh, lacuna stroke usually caused by the small artery atherosclerosis. Uh, and uh, also thrombotic usually is a large vessel uh, uh, occluded gradually. So for cardiac ca artery stroke, uh, there's a, a we can see the uh, normal anatomy uh, here. Uh, so the cardiac bifurcation is the most common uh, uh, position, common location. Uh, to have uh, 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 atherosclerotic plaque uh, develop here because there's a, a vessel branch that's a shooting force and cause the, the 
the vessel wall injury and there's a uh, plague formation uh, around the priority bifurcation is the most common place we can see the plague. So we can use the priority uh, uh, ultrasound to see the blood flow and to see the either the, uh, the vessel uh, is a plague on the vessel. Uh, we have uh, uh, a some workshop, uh, uh, I think, start from X months, so uh, every every month. So if you have time, you can, can join us to, to take the uh, uh, ultrasound workshop. Uh, okay. So uh, for grading the plate, uh, uh, regarding the thickness of the, the plate, uh, there's a low risk if uh, 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 there's a, uh, less, less than 1.5 millimeters, intermediate risk uh, uh, between uh, 1.5 to 2.4 millimeter, and high risk uh, in, for uh, uh, greater than 2.5 millimeters. So for carotid artery stroke, uh, the manifestation can have uh, uh, severe symptom because there is a uh, main artery supply uh, uh, most of uh, our head brain and uh, sometimes uh, cloudy artery stroke can have a uh, uh, pre uh, stroke symptom uh, called a myelosis gap. this is because uh, the Osami artery is the first uh, branch of uh, in, the first intracranial branch of uh, uh, internal carotid artery. So if there's a, a carotid artery stroke, uh, the aseroma uh, going through the internal carotid artery to the ophthalmic artery, it can cause the, the ophthalmic artery uh, blood flow decrease. So the patient may experience like this, like the, the shade uh, in one of his eyes or he or her eyes, uh, then uh, this will come, uh, it will, this will recover, sometimes this will can recover uh, about uh, uh, half hour or, or longer. So if you have this symptom, you should check is the possibility of uh, the artery stenosis. And for middle cerebral artery uh, stroke syndrome, uh, we can see this uh, cartoon show the uh, neural anatomy, uh, the, uh, this uh, distribution, the supply of the middle cerebral artery here. So middle cerebral artery supply, uh, the area of the middle cerebral, uh, middle cerebral artery supply include the face and the arms. Uh, for an anterior cerebral artery is here, supply the leg. So for a, a middle cerebral artery stroke, uh, we can see the patient may have the facial weakness and the arm weakness and the less uh, leg weakness. So that's the point. And also uh, there's a, a speech area uh, uh, supplied by, by the uh, middle cerebral artery. There's broca area for the motor fascia and the one care area for the uh, sensory aphasia. So if the patient has speech problem, you should uh, uh, notice the patient may have uh, uh, middle cerebral artery stroke. So this is a case example, a 55-year-old uh, uh, accountant. Uh, he has confusion. Uh, he can uh, speak fluently. Uh, say that she can can cannot read. Okay, so they cannot uh, have trouble to do calculation, uh, but still can do work. So the, the, there's a, a small area of NCA territory uh, uh, stroke here. For the anterior cerebral artery, it's supplied uh, in the uh, middle of the brain. So you can see 
uh, we can see that the this may cause the lack uh, weakness much more than the the the, the arm weakness, and uh, sometimes it can cause the speech problem as well. This uh, an example is a uh, uh, fifty-two year old right hand uh, man, high school teacher. If his family notice he has a uh, uh, change of mood and depressed because uh, uh, the anterior valve is supply of frontal lobe. The frontal lobe uh, uh, is the function of frontal lobe is uh, related to our emotion and personality. So sometimes uh, uh, the ACS job uh, patient may not have significant motor weakness, but he, the patient may have uh, some uh, personal change. Like uh, the, this uh, patient says there's a mood change or depression or became uh, less speech output. So for posterior cerebral artery syndrome, sex stroke, uh, this usually uh, appear the, uh, when the patient has uh, visual field problem. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, the PCA uh, stroke, the patient may not have uh, obvious weakness, but the patient may mention uh, when he drive uh, a car, he cannot uh, see the, uh, the cars coming by, by one side. So that's a problem because of the visual field defect. So this uh, another case you can see the image here is a uh, uh, posterior PCA territory. So remember the blood supply of brain area, and uh, you can uh, understand why the patient has such symptom uh, to uh, present as stroke. Uh, sometimes the uh, uh, infarct may. Uh, occurred in the watershed area. Uh, the reason is because sometimes uh, there's a, a reduce of blood supply uh, because of uh, heart problem, uh, heart failure, or other uh, reason to cause the drop of the blood pressure that may cause the watershed impact. Uh, there's uh, several types of watershed infarction uh, on the image, you can see the watershed infarct can be the cortical watershed infarct uh, is between the ACA and NCA territory, between the NCA and the PCA territory, or there can be a, 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 a mistyped uh, watershed infarct, or this can be internal watershed infarct, like uh, this uh, can appear in in here, uh, it's called the internal watershed infarct. So that is because the, uh, the systemic hypotension, or sometimes they may have some severe stenotic uh, carotid artery, or even uh, the patient may have uh, heart failure may cause the watershed infarct. So uh, the Lacuna stroke is, uh, we have talk, uh, mentioned about the uh, uh, small vessel disease. It's usually, uh, Lacuna stroke usually uh, occurred in the uh, penetrating artery uh, to the vessel ganglia or to the brain stem. So there are several Lacuna syndrome uh, you uh, may may uh, may see. Uh, the most common one is uh, pure motor uh, lacuna stroke. The patient usually uh, uh, present with uh, 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 one side unilateral, one side weakness, can be paresis, or sometimes with this astria, dysphagia. The possible uh, location of infrared may be uh, exist in the internal capsule, pursuing or basis form. Those are the pathway 
of the Portugal spinal tract tract goes, uh, and the uh, the second compound is the the ataxic hemiparesis. Uh, this patient may have uh, have the uh, uh, mild weakness on one side and uh, also have the the uh, ataxic on the same side. So the location of infarct uh, can be in the internal pressure postulating or basic pontis or corona radiata. And there's another three uh, uh, lacuna syndrome, dysarthria, candy hand, you can. Uh, uh, understand clearly because the patient has disease. He has if the patient has disease, uh, hand, you can say it's a disease can be hand lacuna syndrome. Or sometimes it is only sensory symptom, same uh, uh, sensory symptom or sign uh, appear. So it's a pure sensory, and sometimes there's a mixed sensory and not a stroke. So for lacuna syndrome, is about 90% are due to the chronic hypertension and or other arthrosclerotic risk factor. So hypertension and the arthrosclerotic risk factor is very important for the stroke uh, prevention and stroke care. So this is the uh, image uh, example uh, to see, uh, to differentiate the different a uh, type of uh, uh, five, uh, five meter lesion on the uh, magnetic resonance image. Uh, for the recent uh, small uh, cortical subcortical infarct, the uh, DWI image will uh, get uh, brighter. Uh, for the uh, lacun, they may have the, uh, the cavity in in the center and the uh, Around there is a high signal intensity on the T2 failure image. So you can uh, differentiate this as a new one or an old one. So for the DW, you can see that this is a, a new one. Uh, it is bright on DW. There's an old one with a cavitation and deep, uh, around the, surrounded by the uh, 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 bright area. So for uh, lacuna infarct, uh, the long term uh, appearance may be sometimes uh, about what ten percent the lacun uh, can be disappear. Uh, but about uh, thirty to eighty percent, it looks like a five meter lesion. So when you see uh, NI, there's a five meter lesion, uh, you should. Uh, uh, be careful, this may be a previous lacuna stroke. And uh, this is uh, uh, about 20% to, to 90% is uh, uh, cavitation. For cavitation, I, we know it's a, a, a lacuna here. But sometimes this can appear like a, a bright uh, a spot uh, on the T2 uh, frail image like the uh, other uh, type of uh, five meter lesion. For the intracerebral hemorrhage, the, about 35% of the uh, intracerebral hem hemorrhage occur in the cutana, and the 20% in SAMAS, 20% uh, in the lobar area, and the 15% in pons, and 10% in cerebral. Uh, Following the time, you can see the uh, hematoma uh, evolution on the CT scan. So uh, for the acute stage, it's uh, about uh, one to two day, one to three days. Uh, you can see the very uh, high signal intensity uh, on the CT scan. Uh, but in the subacute stage, you can see it became uh, foggy like appearance and the, the, the high signal is gradually mm -hmm. fade away. And finally, there's in chronic uh, uh, hemorrhage, after the chronic stage, you, know, there's, you didn't see the, the fight one and just a, a low, low signal intensity.
sometimes uh, when we see a patient have a neurological deficit in acute uh, onset, uh, uh, at first we should uh, be aware of a stroke. But sometimes there is an other condition may mimic stroke. For example, uh, like uh, some brain abscess, the brain abscess can uh, present uh, like a, a stroke symptom to cause the motor weakness. And, uh, uh, but sometimes they get, the patient may have uh, fever or leukocytosis or other uh, infection. Uh, side and the neoplasm may also uh, may present like a stroke. Uh, although uh, most of neoplasm, the cause is uh, uh, is subacute onset, uh, runs about uh, several days to weeks to to get the symptom. And uh, there's a uh, uh, some. Disease like the divinating disease may have acute onset like the multiple sclerosis. Uh, I think multiple sclerosis is, uh, the prevalence is much higher in, in uh, uh, North America and the Europe, but not uh, so frequent in, in Taiwan or in, in Africa. But it's still, uh, sometimes you still can see the divinating lesion can present a, a clinical symptom like a stroke. And the other condition like a, a trauma or psychogenic, sometimes psychogenic uh, or functional can mimic stroke. Let's take a look at uh, some interesting neurological examination here. This is called a Hoover sign. Hoover sign is uh, when the patient has weakness uh, when they uh, try to uh, use his weakness part. The other part, the other side will also uh, use force. So if the, uh, in a normal person, uh, 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 in a patient, if he, if, if he has, uh, he or she has a uh, Right leg weakness, right leg weakness. Uh, you can support uh, his or her uh, leg and uh, ask him to push down, push down. If, if the patient has real weakness, uh, real weakness, when she push down, you also can feel the other normal limb and also push down. So that's a Hoover sign. If the patient uh, say he has a right leg weakness, but you didn't feel the left side uh, push down, that's maybe a functional or major or psychogenic weakness. So that's a, 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 a test that you can differentiate a true weakness or false. Or oh, the other is the uh, hip adductor side. Adductor side is also is also the same when you you ask patient to uh, abduct the, the hip. Uh, you can feel uh, the weakness part is weak, and uh, the other normal part is also use force to try to. to this is a, a go associate movement. So if the patient you ask the, to do. Uh, the abduction on the weaker side, but the normal side uh, didn't move. That's a problem. Uh, that's a function, not a real weakness. The other one you can uh, observe uh, in the, uh, the arm. Uh, when you ask the patient to uh, raise the arm with palm up uh, and close the eyes, if the patient has weak, weakness, uh, the patient may have uh, coordination and the drift. If there is also only coordination, but uh, the only drift, uh, there, there is no coordination, that is not real weakness. And uh, for the face, 
the face, if uh, the patient tell he has a jupin like yeah, this type, you can observe this quartisma uh, muscle. If you see real weakness, the, you didn't see the, you cannot see the quartis muscle uh, contraction. But if this is a, a, not a real weakness for his face, when he shoot it, you can see the quartis muscle contraction. So those are a functional neurological sign you may differentiate from the, the uh, real abnormal. So let's talk about the uh, uh, management. Uh, for management, we separate uh, from uh, separate two parts. One is acute uh, management, and the uh, ER is preventive med uh, management. But I think prevention is more important than acute treatment. So for uh, a stroke management, uh, we, uh, when we uh, see a patient uh, has stroke symptom, we you notice uh, it, it is stroke and the uh, time of onset. Then we go to differentiate is uh, ischemic or hemorrhage one. Uh, for this this part, uh, we can uh, use the uh, uh, brain CT to differentiate, or you can uh, by the clinical you can uh, separate the uh, two but you, you, you still need a brain CT to measure it's a hemorrhage or it's giving it better. And for the management, uh, for the hemorrhage stroke, because there's a hematoma layer, so it can cause the increased uh, cerebral pressure, increased intracranial pressure. So this, in, for acute management, you should uh, uh, notice about uh, the ICP problem. And uh, for ischemic stroke, uh, the, the, the way we need to do is uh, try to uh, open the occluded vessel. That's the, the, the main part. But sometimes it cannot uh, uh, achieve because the, 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 the maybe it's not, uh, too tight or it's uh, difficult to reach. So aftercare is the same, the risk factor control and the rehabilitation. So uh, when we when a patient has short symptom, the time is great. Because uh, uh, as the previous slide, you see that there's a, a ischemic, there's a, a vascular factor and metabolic factor, it can occur uh, very fast to uh, result in the tissue damage. So as fast as possible to make decision to what you will do. So uh, we can take the uh, history uh, within five minutes uh, when uh, less, uh, less time long to be well, uh, what's the symptom, uh, how quick the symptom reach worse, uh, and any change of the symptom from onset, and the uh, uh, vital sign, and the medical condition and the medication, especially uh, for anticoagulant. Uh, if less, a patient has uh, anticoagulant therapy uh, when less taken, uh, some, sometimes uh, the hem, uh, intracranial hemorrhage may be caused by uh, anticoagulant use or other like the recent trauma surgery or recent stroke. So the clinical symptom uh, we have mentioned uh, before this anterior circulation, we have noticed uh, motor dysfunction, uh, loss of vision, and the hemianopia, visual field defect, and the speech problem, aphasia, and the sensory deficit. For the posterior circulation, the patient might have uh, might not have uh, weakness. Uh, when, when the uh, stroke uh, starts. Uh, the, there's uh, several uh, 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 symptoms uh, the patient may be complained. There's a 5D, 
uh, including the limb dysmetria, Disney's vertical, diplopia, dysarthria, dysphagia, and the drug attack. So the, if the patient have the, have low speed, you have may, you have been noticed that the patient, patient may have the posterior circulation stroke. And the large infarction site, we should be be uh, very careful because the, the large infarction may have uh, the subsequent uh, brain edema and even uh, cause the death. Uh, if a patient uh, comes with a conscious impairment, uh, bilateral eye conjugate deviation, uh, or minimal hemiotopia, or global aphasia, or dense hemiplegia, those signs uh, you should be uh, aware the patient may have large infarction sign. So now that we use the the best uh, to monitor is, is a stroke or a large vessel stroke. So it's, uh, uh, it's uh, the B is for balance. So if the patient has balance problem, the I is, is for the patient has conjugate deviation to one side. The face, if the patient has uh, face asymmetry. The arm, you ask the patient to raise some arm to see there is a drooping of the one arm. And the speech, ask the patient some uh, question to see the patient can answer correctly. And then remember the T is important. T is important. When does the, does the, the symptom occur? The time is important. Because time is brain, and uh, now we have uh, several methods to rescue the uh, dying in impending dying brain. Uh, so there's a developing, uh, there's a uh, NIG stroke scale widely used uh, for the uh, acute stroke evaluation. You can you can go to the. Uh, internet to see the, the teaching video to teach you how to uh, calculate, how to uh, assessment the, the energy cell scale. For acute stroke, nowadays, we uh, at first we separate its, uh, its uh, ischemic or hemorrhage one. If hemorrhage one, uh, as hemorrhage stroke, we, we mentioned previously to just uh, uh, monitor the ICP and uh, check is there bleeding tendency to end the correct length. For ischemic stroke, uh, the time is very important. If the patient has symptom onset uh, within 4.5 hours, previously three hours, we can use the intravenous TPA thrombolysis therapy. The dose is uh, uh, 0.9 mg per kilo. About 40% to 50% patient uh, receive uh, uh, TPS uh, treatment, they have favorable outcome compared with uh, the do nothing. So, uh, how about the, the early stroke sign when you, we see on CT. Does anybody see there's abnormal? There's any abnormality on this? How about the first one? The left first one? Is there any abnormal here? Can you see? Can you see? Anybody see this? Is there any, any abnormal? Look here. This is a bright line here and a bright dark here. This is a hypertense vessel sign. Uh, for cerebral vessel, if you we do the non-conscious CT, we we cannot see the bright dark here. 
the bright part is because there is a black cloud here. So it means there is a, a black cloud occurred the, the, the main uh, middle separate. And how about this one? The second one. Is the left side of normal or right side? Is left side of normal or right side of normal? Left, please raise hand. Left side of normal? Right side of normal? Or, or, or of normal? Okay, take a look at the insular cortex here. The insular cortex uh, is like a ribbon. Like a ribbon. The, like a zigzag. So you can see uh, on the CT image, the right side, the ribbon size is lost. So it's uh, abnormal on the right side. So it's caused by uh, potentially several edema. How about this one? Left abnormal or right abnormal? Left? Right? So two person choose right. No person nobody choose what choose left, right? Okay, so so the right is not the right. So abnormal is at the left side. Uh, Normally, uh, on the CT scan, we can see the lentiform nucleus and the putamen in uh, slightly higher contrast compared with the uh, internal capsule here. This internal capsule possibly the lentiform because the the lentiform nucleus is. Uh, uh, there's a uh, neurons there, but for the internal capsule, this fiber check goes uh, through it. So it's uh, on CT you can see there's a, a slight lower density in the internal capsule. So it's make a uh, contrast like a triangle shape uh, as dendy form nucleus, uh, including the global cases and the cutamen. So if you see, if you can see here, it's all dark, slight dark and gray here. So it's, it's uh, also uh, means it may have some several edema uh, occur. Uh, how about the fourth one? Left is left normal or right normal? Left, right, 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 right is of the normal. You can see uh, there's gray matter and the gray matter, gray matter a little bit higher, uh, and the, uh, the white matter is a little bit uh, lower attenuation. So at the right side, you didn't see uh, like this, uh, there's a surface and uh, there's a uh, foil and the white differentiation. And uh, for less one is that uh, you didn't see the uh, uh, surface at the uh, right hemisphere. So those are the, the early CT sign that you will produce stroke. So sometimes uh, the a uh, large hemi hemisphere infarction can have a particular hemorrhage like this hemorrhage transformation. So for acute uh, large uh, artery stroke, you, sh you should be uh, uh, more aware about uh, the malignant uh, change and the uh, progression, faster progression. So the TPA uh, has uh, published in, in 1995 in uh, NEJN, 
uh, the result is very very good uh, after uh, in the selective case in selected cases they have a very good outcome after TPA uh, treatment uh, but there's a, a time factor may influence the TPA treatment uh, if you do it as fast as possible the effect is better but if you uh, give the uh, TPA uh, too, too late it may not be beneficial for the stroke the TPA we, we know is a tissue plasminogen activator so it can cut the, the fibrin to dissolve the, the blood clot. So uh, we can use the uh, recombinant uh, tissue press uh, nodule activator to treat, to dissolve the, the blood clot in your cerebral vessel. How to use it? We use the uh, 0.9 milligram per kilo uh, one tenth uh, IV bolus for uh, push for one minute, then the rest 90% IV infusion for one hour. This is standard standard protocol. Uh, which uh, which pa patient may have contraindication for IV thrombolysis? If the patient have uh, uh, previous ICH or suspect uh, SH, uh, subvacuinal hemorrhage, or uh, other active internal breathing, or the patient use the uh, anticoagulant with the INR greater than 1.7, uh, and the platelet count less than uh, 100,000 millimeter uh, square uh, cubic millimeter. Those patients uh, may uh, contradict uh, to for IV thrombolysis. For the thrombolysis, we want to save uh, not the core, not is the save the penumbra. Because uh, the correct correct time, uh, the blood the blood vessel occurred. When the, the ischemia correct time, we, we didn't know. We only know the symptom appear. We see the patient has wood motor weakness. But the blood vessel occlude maybe uh, several minutes or several hours before the neurological symptom appear. So we can save only the penumbra. Those cells. Uh, uh, had a uh, reduced blood flow uh, between the 30 to 50 milliliter per 100 gram uh, per minute. Those, those, those area we can save them, not the core. So after the thrombolysis, we still sometimes we still see some uh, uh, infarct call uh, on the subsequent MRI image, but the function will get better. Nowadays, we can use the uh, CT image to calculate an aspect score. This aspect score is counted uh, 10 area. This N1 uh, middle cerebral artery, N1 branch, N2 branch, N3 branch. It's, uh, I, it's called there is cell capture and the lamp form nucleus internal capture and uh, this N4, N5, N6, there's 10, 10 area if there's a, a decrease and attenuation they count one so uh, we can use the aspect score to predict is, is it a large infarction or not so nowadays uh, beside the IV uh, TPA thrombolysis treatment. We also can do the mechanical intra-arterial thrombectomy therapy within the certain time period. So this is a, a video shows how to do it. 
it's just like your your pipe in your house there's something cluttered inside and you do the vacuum to suck the brain blood plug out it comes from the femoral artery to goes to the to the intra uh, cerebral intracranial artery to reach the uh, blood clot area and you can use the uh, vacuum like you do at home <laughs> to, to suck the brain blood clot out or use the uh, uh, several device like the uh, 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 metal wire to uh, remove the blood clot then uh, reinstall the, the blood flow to the, the original uh, ischemic area so uh, what uh, patient is uh, eligible for the mechanical thrombectomy therapy uh, the time is still a, an important issue for anterior circulation we uh, suggest uh, first the six hours so the symptom onset six hours uh, Within six hours, uh, those patients can have a, a better outcome. Uh, but uh, in some cases, selected cases, if the, uh, the image uh, shows there's a large penumbra area, uh, the time can uh, up to 16 hours, according to the recent uh, clinical trial published in EJM. And for posterior circulation, we suggest uh, within 24 hours. And uh, we use the some image modality like uh, the aspect score we mentioned uh, in the previous slide. And uh, there's, there's a small uh, infarct core and uh, there's a large uh, vessel occlusion. How about the uh, intracerebral hemorrhage intracerebral hemorrhage can appear uh, we have mentioned before that this in the face of India some brain stem cell there how about the, the treatment of acute care uh, let me see let me go faster okay so the hemorrhage uh, the, the cause of hemorrhage can be the primary intracerebral hemorrhage or secondary the primary usually uh, the most common most often is caused by, by hypertension but there are some uh, patient uh, the intracerebral hemorrhage is secondary to uh, arterial venous malformation or hemorrhagic tumor or infected endocarditis or cavernous malformation those can cause the uh, uh, hemorrhage, uh, intracerebral hemorrhage, but the area is different uh, from the hypertensive hemorrhage place. For acute management of intracerebral hemorrhage, uh, there is a working flow shown here. At, at first, we have uh, to make sure the the ABC is okay, and the newer image. Uh, to show the, the, the hemorrhage area and the extent and uh, uh, we had we needed to uh, neurological assessment frequently for the conscious uh, coma scale uh, gastro coma scale and the nitrous gastro scale to see the deterioration of neurological uh, uh, deficit because uh, sometimes the, the hematoma can cause the increased intracranial uh, pressure or the hematoma can rebuilding. At this time, we may need a, a newer surgery to uh, intervention. And uh, we, we need to uh, correct uh, 
uh, to control the blood pressure and the coagulopathy if the patient has uh, and the, uh, frequently evaluate uh, the coma scale and the possibility to uh, condition to for surgical intervention. So this is a uh, 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 warning sign uh, if the patient there's a hematoma here, if there's a, a bright dot here, it's called a spot sign. If you see uh, there's a spot in a hematoma, you should be noticed. It's a can, this patient can, can have hematoma expansion. Uh, how about the, the time for uh, uh, ICH? About uh, 60, 60, uh, 26 percent, they start uh, about one, one hour. But some uh, about uh, uh, 10 percent may the hem hematoma grow may stop uh, after 20 hours. So uh, beware of uh, if the patient are more far, you should be correct the coagulopathy as well. So. For the medical therapy for intravenous uh, hemorrhage, uh, the most parties to do the correct uh, coagulopathy and control the hypertension. And there are several uh, drugs. Uh, if the patient are low firing, we need to give the vitamin K. If the patient has uh, some other uh, uh, made um, med other medication like uh, the, the oral other uh, novel uh, oral uh, like rivaloxaban and dazepam those uh, factor 10 10 a inhibitor you may need to do uh, uh, transfusion plasma transfusion to correct the coagulopathy so what is the uh, 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 Acute stroke management. So it's a, a summary uh, here is a, a, at first uh, the important is vital sign, and there's the etiology and the prevention, the deterioration, and uh, uh, you also need to prevention of some complication like the aspiration pneumonia, pressure sore, uh, urinary tract infection, dehydration, stress yes. ulcer caused. Uh, causing uh, upper GI bleeding, even thrombosis, or other the temple shoulder or the contraction. So early and advanced uh, rehabilitation is uh, important after the acute uh, in the uh, acute care. So for uh, some special treatment for acute stroke, uh, uh, if the patient has stroke involution. It means that the patient had the weakness became uh, worse uh, uh, after the the first uh, time you see uh, this uh, maybe the sound uh, stroke evolution maybe the some other uh, blood clot uh, forming uh, in the larger artery uh, we, uh, there's uh, some suggestion is to uh, use the heparin heparin treatment. Is always use the low barrier heparin and that's our parin. Which one, uh, uh, which patient uh, is indicated for heparin IHA or low barrier heparin? It's basic artery inclusion, frequent TIA, strong involution, and body stroke, or other uh, uh, venous problem like uh, venous thrombosis, even thrombosis. Uh, cerebral edema may occur uh, uh, because uh, the, either the ischemic stroke or hemorrhage stroke. This is because endothelial uh, damage and the cytotoxic edema. So this can cause an increase in intracranial pressure uh, very soon. Sometimes you need to do uh, surgical intervention to do uh, craniotomy to save the life. For the IHCP, there's uh, several symptoms you should be aware about the, the possibility of IHCP is headache, projectile vomiting, 
party Dima or Cushing Triad. Cushing Triad is uh, the blood pressure go higher and the uh, heartbeat uh, go down. The, how to manage uh, the ICP? Uh, you can uh, elevate the head at the 30 degree and uh, use some of small agent uh, such as mannitol or glycerol. But for glycerol, you should uh, be care uh, about if your patient has uh, diabetes mellitus. The glycerol uh, may uh, uh, co cause the blood sugar get higher. And you can we can use uh, some uh, uh, steroid for vasodilatory edema, desamethasone, or hyperventilation. Keep the PSO to around the twenty five to thirty millimeter mercury. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes the still cannot control by low medical management. We need to decompress it with craniotomy. So about the hypertension, hypertension treatment is uh, very important uh, in a stroke, stroke patient, but it's different uh, in ischemic stroke and uh, uh, between ischemic stroke and uh, hemorrhagic stroke. For hemorrhagic stroke, we want to keep the blood pressure lower, but for ischemic stroke, we want to keep the blood pressure higher. Uh, so if too low, so if we want to control the blood pressure uh, uh, for ischemic stroke, not too low and not too fast. So we suggest to uh, control the uh, mean artery pressure around 150 millimeter per mercury. So uh, it's about the systolic blood pressure uh, less than uh, 180 or uh, 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 220 or diastolic blood pressure uh, less than 120. Lost antihypertension drug can be used for stroke, but uh, sometimes you uh, those are safe like the AC uh, inhibitor, ARA uh, angiotensin. Uh, receptor antagonist and uh, CCP calcium channel block, those are safe. Uh, but for uh, in some condition like the uh, uh, direct alpha uh, alpha blocker, this may cause the uh, may cause the increase the uh, ICH. So for uh, choosing the antihypertension drug. We usually do the, the common ones like the ARA and the CCP. Uh, those are safe. Uh, the important thing is uh, for stroke management is uh, prevention. How to prevent the disease? At first, we have to know the risk factor. For the risk factor of ischemic stroke, there's a major risk factor including the old age, uh, greater than 65, and hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, or previous stroke. And uh, the other minor risk factor like smoking, alcohol, hyperlipidemia, obesity, immobility, and the use of some drugs like the hormone replacement therapy, contraceptive, those can cause the increased uh, coagulability, so may cause uh, may uh, be a risk for ischemic stroke. And how about uh, for the ICH? The most important is hypertension, and some other risk factors like uh, uh, cerebral and amyloid angiopathy, uh, most in uh, older patient or familial uh, amyloid cases, uh, alcohol intake, smoking, cholesterol, and diabetes, mellitus, and gene some genetic and the drug abuse. Those can 
the uh, risk factors uh, for skin uh, intracerebral hemorrhage. So the uh, short risk factor can be uh, separate. Uh, also, the genetic may contribute the short, but not 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 so common. Uh, in Taiwan, we see the uh, uh, Fabry disease and uh, uh, and the Notch three uh, uh, mutation. Uh, those are uh, genetic uh, related stroke, but not so common. The most common is the hypertension, diabetes, and the heart problem. So when we need to give a patient medication for stroke prevention, if a patient uh, have a TIA, if a patient has a stroke-like symptom, we can calculate the ABCT, ABCD2 score. If the score is uh, uh, for is in the uh, greater than four is moderate to high uh, risk for stroke. So those patients need to give anti credit drug for the stroke prevention. And in uh, aging population, in several countries like the UK, US, and the Taiwan also, the uh, the age of population greatly increase the risk for stroke about five four to seven four. Age of population is a abnormal reason in your heart. It can cause the uh, LA thrombus formation, and it because there is a turbulent flow. Uh, here and the, the irregular heartbeat can cause the if the plaque uh, is loosened the plaque can, will uh, uh, dislodge to occur the vessel so atrial fibrillation is an important uh, cause of embolic stroke so it can re increase risk of stroke uh, greatly uh, according to the, the, the previous study. And the latest uh, uh, chart, chart, chart bar score uh, calculate the risk of stroke uh, when a patient with atrial fibrillation. If the score is uh, uh, greater than is it greater than three, there's a uh, three percent uh, annual risk of stroke. If four is four point eight. If the the patient has score at the uh, six, there's about ten percent uh, annual risk of stroke. So it's it's a uh, uh, a greater increase the risk of stroke. So those patients needed to to give anticoagulation therapy. Previously, we used the warfarin, but warfarin, there's some problem because uh, the warfarin, you should keep the iron R, iron R in within a certain period to get the maximum effect, but it's not easy to do. And the warfarin uh, has the, uh, <coughs> the higher uh, risk of uh, hemorrhage uh, in body like the GI hemorrhage or other uh, hemorrhage. So nowadays uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, direct oral anticoagulant. Uh, for uh, is, is example, the Dabiga chain is factor 2 inhibitor. For Rivarosapen, Apisapen, and Dosapen, those are factor 10A inhibitor. So those are effective to reduce the stroke risk with in patients with atrial fibrillation compared with warfarin and the less hemorrhage uh, complication. <laughs> the other uh, important risk factor is uh, hyperlipidemia for stroke. So 
uh, we have several medication uh, this uh, molecular mechanism or comma uh, lipidol drug right uh, editimib is a, is blocker the intestine uh, transport of the fat uh, into the uh, chylomicro into the bloodstream and uh, we commonly use the starting is a uh, HNG coenzyme A reductase inhibitor and the starting also may act on the LDL receptor we know that uh, <coughs> cholesterol is carried uh, by uh, uh, lipoprotein there are several types of lipoprotein the LDL is a bad guy LDL uh, carry the uh, cholesterol to uh, outside uh, from the liver to outs outside to to other body region especially they they, they prefer to go to the blood vessel wall to form the uh, authority plague so LDL is a bad guy in contrast HDL carry the cholesterol back to the liver so HDL is a good guy so there's another uh, medication lipidolin drug uh, currently uh, used is PCSK9 it can inhibit the LDL receptor function so it can reduce LDL formation that can uh, reduce the atherosclerosis formation so from the uh, the recent uh, study there's a significant uh, the uh, uh, reduced uh, uh, risk of shock uh, when you use the, either the starting or uh, exiting plate or uh, other PCSK9 inhibitor But uh, besides the uh, uh, medication, we still have something to do. This is an interstroke of Africa uh, study, uh, include uh, 973 case control pairs, uh, uh, including the uh, Mozambique, uh, Nigeria, Sudan, South Africa, and uh, Uganda, uh, no, no as what in, in the data, but I think the, the, this study also can reflect the, the people in here. Uh, the, there's a higher, highest risk is hypertension and uh, dyslipidemia. So those two are important risk factors when we see a patient or educate the population to prevent a stroke and uh, take a look uh, we have a uh, uh, good choice to reduce the risk uh, it's a healthy diet uh, I think we have we provide healthy diet today <laughs> oh, no fried chicken okay so and the regular exercise so those we can do uh, beside the medication so the prevention of stroke, uh, the primary prevention, we need to uh, treatment of hypertension. Uh, if uh, the patient has uh, uh, atrial fibrillation, we need anticoagulation. Uh, lifestyle modification, exercise, we, we, we know is uh, important uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, good, good diet, diet uh, healthy diet. And starting use for the hyperlipidemia and the uh, uh, influenza vaccination will be helpful because uh, uh, some viral infection may also uh, increase the risk of stroke. For second prevention, uh, when a patient uh, got stroke first time and we hope to uh, he or she uh, will free uh, in the following, uh, in the rest of their, their life so that is secondary prevention for ischemic stroke also the blood 
pressure control and the, and the lipid lowering and therapy, and if you are using for atrial fibrillation, lifestyle, anti place therapy like the aspirin or copito grill, or those those two are effective to to for stroke prevention. And uh, some patient, you would count the artery, you can see the greater than seventy uh, percent. Uh, uh, stenosis, you can, we can do the carotid and directomy or do the stenting. Uh, for hemorrhagic struggle, the blood pressure is uh, most important. And lifestyle and, and uh, avoid some medication. So, uh, we have the notice that uh, the, a good stroke care is not only the acute management, is a uh, Sometimes we need uh, education and uh, to do the uh, lifestyle modification, and uh, we may need some uh, uh, rehabilitation uh, if the patient got stroke and uh, got uh, the neurology deficit. Rehabilitation is uh, important to reduce the complication and uh, help the, the patient. Uh, back to the normal life. So the summary is, uh, remember that the stroke is uh, uh, usually sudden onset. There's a differential, different presentation in different stroke type and the location. For example, the anterior circulation, posterior circulation, the symptoms are different. And uh, we need to prompt identification and uh, manage the correct management to save the brain because time is brain. And uh, uh, the most important thing is uh, uh, do it before the disease occur. So respect the control and prevention. And finally, if the patient got stroke, we need a multidisciplinary uh, stroke care, including uh, uh, nutrition and uh, uh, rehabilitation. Okay, that's all for the, today's uh, talk. Is there any question?